thus far, and that everything you've asked God for according to his will has been manifest in your life. We have been on a series talking about the authority of the believer. And as we have been going through this series, I pray that you will go back, amen, even to our previous uh, series to where we talked about body, soul, and spirit to better understand what it means, amen, to have, amen, the authority of the believer. Because until you understand the threefold makeup of who you are in Christ, amen, me preaching about authority will not fully have its capable of meaning of really impacting your life, amen, but to have the impact of understanding and knowing what it means to have, amen, uh, authority, amen, is a blessing to know that you have the equipment, you already equipped, and God's plan has already given you the victory, amen, when you understand, amen, again, the authority of the believer, and as a believer, you must come to understand that God wants the best and he wants you to have everything that he has promised. And so as we talk tonight about the authority of the believer, this section of this lesson is talking about believe and receive, believe and receive. It's so, so important that until you can truly believe, you cannot receive, amen? And so when you understand the principle of just taking God at his word. We preached the word this past Sunday. I pray and invite you to go back down the Facebook page and look at our Sunday morning service where I was talking about, amen, how taking God at his word, trusting in the spoken word. And so when you understand really the principles of knowing that God cannot lie and that everything that he says comes to pass, that he will not send his word and it has no effect, that will never happen. So we got to really believe so that we can receive. Now, if God has already given us something, we do not have to plead with him as if we're still trying to get. And so in this lesson, amen, tonight, we're going to be talking about believe and receive. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray right now, amen, that you would move by your mighty power and bless the hearers of the word tonight. As we cover this series talking about the b believing and receiving, our prayer is that someone will gain, amen, a nugget out of all that is being said and transform their life into a miracle. And God, we just give you all the praise. We know as God of Deliverance is not the only one ministering, amen, on the Facebook, amen, uh, media, but God, we want to be a part of the kingdom work to touch souls and lives for the kingdom of heaven. And so God, we thank you right now. Empower me to make this word as clear as even a baby can understand it. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God a praise, somebody. Amen. Glad to have some folks here. Amen. In, on our Facebook page to, tonight. Amen. Thank you, Mary, for tuning in. Sister Jan, thank you for tuning in. Amen. And I know there'll be many more that's going to come as we continue on. Amen. So our first slide on tonight. Amen. As believers in Jesus Christ, amen, it is our responsibility to boldly preach, amen, the gospel and faithfully teach the word of God. Listen to what I said. Faithfully teach the word of God. In other words, we do not want to get into a pattern of compromising, amen, and because we get into relationships with people and become afraid to share the truth. Amen. We also do not want to get into a point where, amen, we're trying to sugarcoat the gospel so that we can, amen, gain friendship, gain popularity, amen, and dilute the word so that we can be acceptable. If we really look back into the gospel days, amen, we find that a lot of the preachers and the prophets were not accepted by society because the word of God should cause conflict in those who do not want to live by the word of God. And so that's why we have, must learn to preach this word in boldness, amen, being ready, amen, to be rejected, be ready to even be accepted, amen. I mean, it, it doesn't mean that everybody's not going to like you because you share the truth. The Bible says that Jesus said, my sheep will hear my voice. They know my voice. 
Amen. They you will not have to be afraid of. Amen. And so we realize and understand that we must be anointed so that we can continue to preach with boldness and assurance and God will confirm his word. Amen. So look, as we turn and look at Romans chapter um, 10, amen. Romans chapter 10 tells us something that's very, very powerful. Uh, let us read it. Amen. It says here, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Who then shall they call on him? How shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? The Bible says, and how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear, come on now, without a preacher? Amen. The word goes on to say, and how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel, amen, of peace. Amen. See, this gospel is supposed to bring peace into your life. It's supposed to bring, amen, a calmness, amen, and a joy because the peace of the Lord comes upon your heart. And it says, and glad tidings of good things. Then it says in that 17th verse, it says, amen, what? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God wants us to share this word, amen, so powerfully that it changes and disrupts Amen. The authority of the enemy that is in their life. Amen. God wants us to preach it boldly. Amen. With assurance to know that the Lord will back up that very thing that you said. Because the manifestation of the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, what happened? It arrested the attention of the people. It was so overwhelming. It began to seize the opportunity. And Paul, Peter stood up in the midst of them. Amen. And he preached Christ. Now, remember now, there was a whole diversity of people in that upper room, but he stood up and he preached boldly. And what did God do? God confirmed with signs, wonders, and miracles. And the people responded by saying, well, what shall we do to be saved? And Peter went on to answer. Listen to what his answer was. His answer was repent. What word is that? We very seldom hear in our churches today, the word repent. Amen. Change your mind. Ch turn around. Amen. Live towards God. Amen. Peter said, listen here. He said, repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remissions of sin. What is that word? Sin. We don't hear that word too much no more. Amen. And so we got to get back to preaching the gospel so that people can understand where they are. Amen. As it pertains to God's vision. I want you to know and understand that we are so bombarded and diluted with so many, amen, opinions about who's right and who's wrong, what's right and what's wrong. Come on now, to where we're now blurring the lines that people now feel comfortable even in their sin. Come on now, because this is not something that's being brought up anymore. Amen. And so here, Peter stood up boldly and said, repent. Amen. Why? He said, for the remissions of your sins, and you shall receive what? The gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. Amen. Amen. All of you that may have been in wrong all your life. Listen, when that gospel is preached, it's a great opportunity to submit your heart and change your life. It says, even as many as the Lord shall call. God's going to call the people out of darkness. Amen. God's going to call those out of, out of sin, out of drugs, out of all kinds of uh, sins that we have labeled, amen, and they're going to come in and they, they're going to be last, but they're going to end up being first because they're going to be on fire for the things of God. Because why? They're going to believe uh, and then they're going to turn around and receive, amen. So consider the text uh, on the day of Pentecost and looking back to Acts chapter um, uh, 1 verses 4 and 5. Look at what it says here. It says, and being assembled together, Listen to what it says now. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Now, I, I want you to understand something. Sometimes when we get excited about God, amen, you might be just freshly saved. Amen. You might have just came out of the world and, you know, you feel the impact of the Holy Ghost on your life. But God is not calling you to run out right away because there is a preparation Amen. There, you know, he told Peter, he said, Peter, after thou art truly converted, 
Then I want you to go out and strengthen the brethren. Because prior to you being strengthened, if you go out too fast, amen, you'll bring shame to his name. So he said here, he said, and you shall not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the father. Wait. Amen. And he said, ye shall hear of me. And John in verse five, it says, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Now, I want you to understand, I'm getting ready to make a, a statement here that you'll understand when I teach it later on down, down the lesson. He said, but wait, amen, for the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Amen. And then it says here in, in, in verse eight, it says what? It says here. And being assembled, it said, but but ye shall be receive the whole the power of the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be what my witnesses both under me and in Jerusalem and Judea. Now he told them to wait in Jerusalem until this power come upon you. Amen. Then after that power, now I want to stop right here. See, when people talk about they have the Holy Ghost, see the Holy Ghost is a, is a sanctifier. Amen. It is an empowerment. It is the gift of God given to man to be able to walk out the plan of God in their life. And so here he's saying, I want you to wait until that real power. I ain't talking about Casper the Friendly Ghost. Amen. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. Amen. When it comes upon you, he's going to give you power to be a witness. Amen. Both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the world of the earth. In other words, God said, I'm going to be able to send you anywhere because you are going to be anointed and equipped for the work that I've called you to. So Peter, amen, was saying, amen, what you're seeing, amen, is the outpouring of the Holy Ghost in this manifestation, amen, of God's coming of his spirit, amen, and my God, the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, amen, anybody that got the whole, I'm talking about the real Holy Ghost, when sin comes to approach you, amen, it empowers you to resist that devil, and that devil will flee. The miraculous manifestation of this power, amen, it caused them to be in awe. And he said, I'm not going to only give it to you, but I'm going to give it to your children and your children's children. Amen. Why? Because he wants us as followers of him to demonstrate, amen, what heaven is like, amen, here in the earth. So Paul, Peter, Peter was looking for, amen, into the future to the next generations. He was empowering them that this promise from God, this experience of the outpouring of the Holy Ghost is even for today. Amen. Come, somebody said today the Holy Ghost is still moving by God's spirit. Amen. And we cannot deny it. We've got to accept it because God has given it. Look at this now. God never quit. Now, when they poured out, now I want you to listen to this very carefully. Now, when God poured out the Holy Ghost, amen, in the day of the upper room, he did not withdraw it. He did not take it back. Amen. It did not stop after that. Amen. We got to realize that this promise was intended to go from generations to generations to all believers throughout time. Amen. He was to be the comforter. He was supposed to be our instructor. Amen. And he will give us wisdom in the time appropriated for when we need a word from God. So God never withdrew, amen, the baptism of the Holy Ghost in his gift, as many have tried to recognize and say that the Holy Ghost is no longer in effect. Amen. But an honest look at church history, you'll find that, amen, there was pockets of believers who believed and received and the power of the Holy Ghost move rapidly throughout the earth. The book of Acts is a great uh, demonstration of all of those that had believed, amen, in this great power that God had poured out. However, somewhere along the line, as life is, amen, they began to doubt God and we entered into what they call in the biblical days, the dark ages, amen, at the church at large, amen. And for whatever reason, amen, they stopped believing and receiving the promise of the Holy Ghost. But then, amen, I don't know if you ever looked, read the book of Azusa Street, amen, there was a great outpouring by a black man, amen, right there, amen, in Azusa Street, preaching that gospel, and the power of God showed up. It was a great manifestation of the outpouring of God. Why? 
because somebody, listen, I want you to know one thing. God don't need a whole lot of people. He just needs somebody that will believe and receive. Therefore, amen, one of the dominant doctrines, amen, that emerged out of the Pentecostal movement was the word called tarry. Now, I want to talk about that, amen, tarrying for the Holy Ghost. I remember our age, amen, my years of growing up, amen, during the, uh, the, the, the 70s, amen, going into the 80s, we, we believed in tarrying, amen. We would lay at the altar waiting for God to pour out his spirit. And I mean, we tarried, amen. Now, we didn't have the knowledge that we have today because, see, today, all you have to do is believe. But, see, because we talk about tarry in the uh, uh, book of Acts, we, because we were really equipped, amen, to what we know now, amen, we used to lay at the altar. We used to just seek God's face. But I want to say this. Tearing had a great effect because we yearned and we panted after God like the, the deer after the water broke. Amen. We, we longed for God. And when we received the Holy Ghost, it was so precious and so valuable to us that we counted an honor to live for God in his righteousness and in his holiness. Amen. So sometimes this quick idea of receiving the Holy Ghost Amen. Some people, amen, they believe it, but it doesn't have no impact because they really don't understand the essence of all that God is doing with them and for them through the Holy Ghost. And in most of it, amen, today, as I said, don't really treasure it as we did in the days of tarrying. Amen. Closing off and going into shut-ins and praying for God to release his holy power. But see, we didn't realize and understand that when he poured it out in the, the upper room, he never took it back. The spirit of God is moving and dwelling and waiting for us to receive that power from on high. Amen. I wish I could get somebody to say hallelujah today. One of the good things about the old Pentecostal movement, boy, is that we were excited to be filled. Amen. We were excited to be touched by God. And then when he touched us, it revolutionized our lives where we did. We had a hunger and a thirst. Amen. So when we what we know about tearing today, we realize and we understand you don't have to worry. I mean, Terry. Amen. Now, what do you mean, preacher? Why, why we don't have to tarry? The reason we don't have to tarry is because I said earlier, he already delivered it to us. Let's look at the scripture. The scripture says here in Acts chapter one, verse four, it says, being assembled together with them, Jesus commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the father. Amen. And you shall be baptized. What? With the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. Now, at that time, Jesus res uh, had been resurrected. Amen. And so because he had been resurrected, but he hadn't, listen to me now, he hadn't ascended, all right? Okay, and so because of that, he told them to wait, amen, until his return to be able to share with them the truth. And as soon as he ascended through, he poured out what? The Holy Ghost and his disciples 50 days later got the power to move forward. So that's what where the waiting came. And our interpretation in the days of old was to tarry like they did. But see, now, once that Holy Ghost was poured out, we just have to receive by faith and trust God in his word. Amen? And so that's the difference. Amen? And so here, however, if we're going to, like, listen, if we're going to really take it literally that you had to tarry, that means what? We literally have to go to the city of Jerusalem <laughs> if you're going to take it literally. See, because we, he said, wait, where? In Jerusalem. So if he told, told them to wait in Jerusalem, that means all of us got to take airfare and go to Jerusalem and, and then wait. No, that's not what he was saying. When he poured it out in the upper room, amen, that was the start of it all. And it spread it throughout the earth. And today we can all receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen to what he says here in the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 49. The Bible says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power, what? From on high. Then Acts comes back 
In Acts 1, 4, it says, Jesus commanded them to do what? That they should not depart Jerusalem and wait for the promise. So Jesus told them to wait, but he's not telling us to wait. He's telling us all we have to do is just believe and we have a life-changing experience to receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. It's awesome to know that God has already made a way for you and I to seek his face and receive from heaven, amen, the power of the Holy Ghost. And I'm talking about in speaking and tongues. The God of heaven will pour his spirit out at the day you come and give your life. But as you continue to yield to his presence, he'll fill you, amen, with his power, sanctify you wholly, and give you a gift of power that you can demonstrate in the earth, that you and I will become his witnesses and won't be overturned or overcome by the frailty of the human flesh. Wow, come on, somebody ought to give God a good praise right there. Amen. And so we got to understand this. Look at this. <clears throat> the reason we aren't seeing a great revival is because we have very few people who are flowing in revival, believing God's word and taking their authority. Come on, say it with me. And taking their authority and doing what? And making the power of God manifest. I, I want to just share a little testimony with you today. We were um, riding into Raleigh uh, today. And today, it seemed like there was police officers all up and down the road. And as we were riding down the highway, we noticed that there was an officer up on top of the bridge and he was shooting a man, uh, one of those speed track guns uh, alongside the highway. Amen. So as people were coming down and he was shooting the, 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 the speed gun, he was taking note of who was speeding. And what they did, they had a car, a police car down the road, sitting there waiting to get information from him up there on the bridge. And that that car in which would be speeding they would then take off and then ride and pull them over and give him tickets. And I'm telling you, they were, there were a lot of people on the side of the road. What is your point, Pastor? My point is, is that the reason the people pulled over, it was because of the authority. Come on, somebody. See, when you got to understand, as a believer, you have awesome, amen, authority, and the enemy knows that you do. But if you don't, he'll keep speeding around in your life and constantly violate your rights as a believer. But when you come to understand that you have all authority to resist that devil because of the gift of God that flows inside of you, he will pull over and he will flee from you because of the power. Come on, somebody say power. Because of the power and the authority as a believer you possess. But if he can persuade you, if he can get you to believe that you don't have that authority, then he can sideswipe you and keep you bound for no reason at all. Let's look at our new. The reason we aren't seeing what I said earlier, great revival is because very few people are demonstrating and manifesting the power and making the power of God manifest. We must stop. Listen to this now. We must step in, out in faith and use what God has given us, amen, or for a revival, or a revival will not be manifest. Now, I'm saying this about stepping out in faith, amen. The officers that shot the gun from off the bridge related authority to the man in the police car. And because he related that information to the policeman in the uh, car, that policeman then had authority to pull, amen, the speeder over to the side. And this is what God is saying. He said, the devil can't back up until you recognize the authority I've given you. Then you can have great revival because you'll put the enemy to flight. Come on, somebody say, thank you, Jesus. And this is what we have to come to understand, that God did not waste his power on you or I. We've got to go out and demonstrate what he has already given. Now, what are you talking about, preacher? If I've given you a Bible, are you listening to me? If I give you a Bible, right, and then I wait a little while and you tell me, uh, uh, Pastor, give me your Bible. There, there's a scripture I want to look at. Uh, 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 come on, let me have your Bible. I will look at you kind of funny because why? I've already given you what I got. Come on, somebody. I've already given you what I got, but you keep asking me 
over and over and over again to give you something I've already given you. And people sometimes wonder why God is silent, amen, when they pray, when they're asking God for certain things or asking God to do something. God says, I've already given you everything you need. Amen, when I said it was finished, it was a done deal. Now all you have to do is learn to operate in that which I've already given you. Because why? Because if I'm going to keep giving you something I've already given you, we waste time dealing with each other. Come on, somebody. And so we need to understand that. I mean, it gets to the point where even Martin Luther, amen, he got to the point where he was looking at religion and he said, I'm tired of religion. This thing ain't working right. This is not the way God designed it. And he, he nailed his, his thesis upon the doors of the cathedral church. Amen. Why? Because he realized that God was sovereign, that God had all power, and it was not, it was not going to be a dead religion to him. Come on, somebody. And so therefore, he began to write amen, his thesis talking about being saved by faith. Amen. We got to realize and understand in the city, amen, where in Germany, where he nailed that thesis and made a revolutionary change, amen, in the lives of so many. I want you to see this note in Romans 3 and 27. The Bible says, where is boasting then? It is excluded. But, but by what? law or works, nay, but by the law of faith. This is what Martin Luther brought out. Martin Luther, amen, he, he, he just was a reformer. Amen. Listen to what it says. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. All right. Are you listening to me? He, he came up and began to share with them that this reformation can happen, but somebody has to stand up at, for the word of God. Amen. And when we stand up for the word of God, God is going to do what he says he's going to do. And a great what? Reformation sprung up. Amen. This one man, I, I'm talking to somebody out here today. We con constantly wait for somebody great with a great name and all that, but you possess that power. You can start right there in your home. You can start right there on your job. You can start right there in your neighborhood. You can start right there in your church. You can start right there, whatever environment you are in, amen, and start sharing this glorious gospel and change the lives of so many. The, uh, the note here on your slide says, Re Reformation sprung up and the world was forever changed because a single person, a physical human being, amen, received and acted on the word of God. Come on, give God a good wave on there on Facebook. Amen. Religion, amen, teaches that God moves in ways. Now, let me, let me slow down and really make this great point that a lot of people who are moving in religious form be talking about God moves in waves, which is not accurate at all. Because back in the 40s and 50s, there was a great move, move of healing. And everybody was talking about the body of Christ and the healing uh, that was going forth. Then, amen, that healing revival took place. Amen, the healing evangelist and tent meetings sprung up all over the place. Amen. And then there was the charismatic movement. Many of you all are old enough to, to remember all these particular type movements. Then there was the word of faith movement, man. Amen. Come on now. Everybody was talking about word of faith, word of power, and all these kind of things. Amen. But God does not move in waves. What God does, he does permanently. He does it complete. We're just throwing things in because of our lack of participation, our lack of trusting God. The healing movement never stopped. The charismatic movement never stopped. Amen. The movement of God never, the word ministry never stopped. We, it was all packaged together. Amen. Healing is still flowing. It never stopped. Come on, somebody. The word movement never stopped because it's the word of God. But we get into these movement fa uh, fantasies, you know, the X and all, all these type of things that man come up with. But God says, no, 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 no. My power has always been present. You just have to believe and do what? receive. Look at this. So we see here, amen, because, amen, of one man, they acted upon the word of God. Then healing revival sprung up because somebody, listen to this now, because somebody saw healing in the word of God and did what? 
and believed the word of God and started releasing this power, amen, into the earth by using what? Their authority. God wants you to use your authority. All of you on Facebook looking at this program today, you ought to share it with, on your page with everybody that would look, amen, and see that this is so very, very vital that you can believe in the miraculous. You can believe in the impossible simply by taking God at his word. Like I said again, our lesson tonight is talking about believing and doing what? Receiving. It was because one man looked and saw healing, and then he began to step out in faith. Come on now, stepping out. They stepped down out on faith, and, and, and the word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost began to demonstrate, amen, its authority through the release obedience of those who would receive the word of God. Come on, you ought to give God a good praise right there. Amen. And it says that healing, come on, that, that healing power has been available ever since the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Let me say that again. It has been available ever since the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But the church hasn't been receiving it. Mm. You ought to tell somebody the problem in the fall has never been with God. God never moves in waves. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Come on, say it with me. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. I want to talk a little bit about, amen, uh, uh, Oral Roberts. Many of you remember Oral Roberts, great man of God. Amen. His first meeting. I want to talk about his first meeting. I'm talking about Oral Roberts. Amen. Great evangelist, great pastor. Amen. Revivals, the whole nine yards. But when he had his first meeting, Oral Roberts asked God three things. Number one, you see it up on your screen. He said the first was a certain minimal number of people in attendance. So before he even went out on the stage, he looked past the curtains to see if there was a certain number of people out there in the audience. And it was. Then he asked God a second question. He said, God, I, I'm not going into debt. He said, now, if this is you, I want you to be able to meet all the requirements of this tent revival. And so before he even started, he took up an offering. And guess what? Every penny up to what he needed was given. Come on, somebody. Then the third thing he asked God, he said, Lord, if this is you, he said, I want to at least see one notable miracle in the midst of this great revival. And guess what? There was such a great outpouring, a notable miracle, and the word of healing spread throughout. And the next thing you know, boom, the gift of God was moving throughout the land. Why? Because one man, I'm, I'm talking about one individual. I'm talking about you right now. The, there's a people out here that God has assigned you to reach. Amen. And they're waiting on you to believe and receive and then cause a deposit in the earth. Come on, give God a good praise right there. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want God to use me. Amen. Any way possible that he seems fit. Look at what John 14 verse 12 says. John 12, uh, 14 verse 12 said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, you shall do greater and greater works. Come on, somebody. And greater works than these shall you do because I do what? I, I go unto my father. So we see here that we have been gi given permission to act like God. <laughs> Glory to God. Tell your neighbor, you've been given permission to act like God. Amen. He don't want you walking around, amen, like a dog with your tail between your legs. He don't want you walking around like you looking like a beggar. He said, listen here, I give you permission to use my name and to go and heal the sick, go and deliver the bound, go and set the captive free. Let them know that there's power in the earth. Come on, somebody. And so we see here, amen, God, that God has always intended for his church to operate in the supernatural. Come on. I, I, I want to talk again about this past Sunday. Amen. We were so caught up in the spirit. Amen. That the Lord led me to 
throw some water, anointed water, out on the congregation and on myself. Amen. And there was such a great outpouring of God's presence in our midst. Simple things that God will take, amen, to show you that he's present. Simple things he'll do to empower you when you trust him. And so we see here that, amen, many years have gone by and have been skipped over because the church has refused to believe in the supernatural power of a supernatural God. Amen. We're getting away from laying on a hand. We're getting away from believing and expecting miracles. People come to church just to dance and to shout and listen to music, but we got to come believing that we're going to have this power to receive from God, to be ambassadors, amen, to go forth and spread this gospel. What did the Bible say? The Bible says greater works. Now, we can argue about what greater works mean, but we need to understand that God has called you and separated you and sanctified you so that you'll go and do the works that he's called you to. You ain't got to go and start a whole nother church. You ain't got to build no building, but to reach the people in the street, reach the people at your job, reach the high and the low. God has called you and I to do this work that he is so precious, amen, that is, he gave his son so that we could do the work. Amen. Look at what it says here. The whole counsel of God has always been available. Amen. To those who would what? Believe. To those who would what? Believe. If you believe and you receive, you go and now deposit. Amen. That's what God wants each and every one of us to do. Amen. He wants us to go and do a work. The Lord is today all that he has ever done and will ever do because he has given it over to us to carry out his mission plan. Oh, come on. Somebody say, amen. Give God some praise right now. Amen. The Bible says in, in Hebrews 13 and 8, he says, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. We got to realize that he said, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He didn't say I was as if he's gone and he's dead. He's that same God that poured out the power in the days of old that he wants to pour out today using you and I. And it's so very, very important. He wants to move in and throughout your life in miracles and healing and deliverance and prosperity. That's what God wants to do. What do you want to do? Amen. Do you want to complain? Do you want to talk about what you don't have? Or are you, amen, be, becoming a receptacle so that you can receive everything? Is your antenna of faith up so that the signal from God can reach you so that you can get the information that he's saying to you so you can use it for his glory? Amen. Here in the earth. Amen. Look at this. Now, everything that God is, is now available to you through what? His word. Amen. His word has all the substance that you'll need to be able, but you have to do what? Believe and receive. Come on, somebody. You got to believe. You got to snatch that thing and put it in your heart. What thing? That word of God that is alive, that gives substance, that gives power. Amen. That gives you the, the go ahead. Amen. To go into the enemy's camp and snatch souls out the fire. That's what God wants from each and every individual. He didn't save you to show off. He saved you and I, amen, for it to be used as his instrument in the earth. As we read this in Hebrews 11 and verse 6, the Bible says, without faith it is impossible to please him. Amen. For he that cometh to God, what? Must believe, come on now, must believe that he is. And that he is what? A rewarder of them that diligently what? Seek him. God is looking for a people who diligently seek him. Amen. So God can honor those, amen, who has hope in him. Oh, man. Did you hear that? God want to honor those who have hope in him. God wants to honor you when you step out and, 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 and fulfill the commission of going out and reaching the laws. He wants to honor you. He wants people to see his giftings flowing in your life. Amen. You're not just a, a talker, but you also are a doer. Amen. You're not just flinging things out. You're walking in the demonstration of the power of a living Christ. Amen. And this is what God is looking for. He's looking for people that will trust him. Amen. That's why we got to believe and do what? Then turn around and receive. You're the one who determines how much revival 
you have, amen, and not God. You determine, amen. You determine how much God can use you, not God. God said, I've given you everything. Now, if you believe me, according to your belief is the exercise of what you'll do, amen. If you believe you can do all things, guess what's going to happen? You're going to do all things. You're not going to be talking about I'm shy. You're not going to be talking about I can't. You're going to be talking about God, what's the next assignment? God, where's the next soul? God calls somebody to come through my path that need a word from you. Come on, somebody. We talk about we want to be used, but getting, when it comes time to getting ready to be used, we find all kinds of reasons why you can't move out, why you can't do this. Well, I need another lesson. No, you don't need another lesson. You just need to receive. Come on. Believe and receive that what God has given you is sufficient enough. Let's look at this next note as I'm getting ready to close out because my time is running out. God has already, uh oh, God has what? God has already given, amen, just, you just have to what? You just haven't received it. If I keep trying to get, have you, have you ever been around somebody and you try to bless them because they may have drove you somewhere and you want to give them some gas money and they constantly say, no, 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 no. You know, I, 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 that's okay. I just wanted to be a blessing. But you blocked off the blessing because you're going to need some more gas money for the next soul that God is getting ready to put in your path. And they may not have what this individual have in blessing you. You got to learn how to receive. Come on now. I know it's hard for some of you, you all to receive when somebody's trying to bless you. I know I can talk for myself. The pastor I was hanging out with today, he, he paid for my lunch. I, I told him, no, man, I, that's okay. No, he said, it's on me. It's on me, preacher. I said, well, okay. You know, and I had to back up. Why? Because I'm blocking his future blessing. When you turn people away from blessing you, guess what? You, you block off their blessing because guess what? God loves a cheerful giver. Come on, somebody. And so here we see God has already given. You just haven't received it. And the last one that I want to say, you need to work on your receiving. Come on now. Let's say it again. You need to work on your receiving. Amen. Not God giving. Amen. You need to work on receiving. God, everything you have, I receive it. Everything you want to give me, I receive it. Every promise in the book is mine. I receive it. So therefore, I'm not going to be Lord, 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 as if I got to keep begging God because he said, I've already given it to you. I've given you joy. I've given you love. I've given you peace. You still, Lord, give me peace in this situation. No, he said, I've already given it to you. You just got to believe you got it. Amen. Jesus walked into that peace when he stood before Pilate. He stood there and he didn't say a word. Why? Because he already received the peace of God. And when you receive the peace of God, you ain't got to keep asking God for peace. Oh, come on, somebody. I pray that this word today has electrified your heart and made you think about some of the things that we so often ask God for. Amen. I pray that you will take this word into heart and that you will believe that what he said to you, amen, you already got it. You already got the power. You just need to believe it. Amen. And then when you believe it, you'll start re receiving it and start using it because you already got it. Amen. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you already got what you need to do what God has called you to do. Amen. If you just, just believe, come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, just believe. Just believe the report of the Lord. And guess what? Everything you stand in need of, God has already provided. You just got to believe it. And when you believe it, you, it'll automatically flow. Amen. One man, Martin Luther. Nailed his thesis and called a great revival. Oral Roberts believed the word of God, one man, and started a great revival. Now it's your turn. What are you going to do? Are you going to sit back and be talking about you still waiting on God when God is actually waiting on you? Whatever church you belong to, you ought to give your very best. You ought not to be settling. You ought not to be given just something just to say you're a part of it. You are to demonstrate excellence, that power. You're working for a kingdom God. Amen. And recognize and understand I've got to give it my all because he gave his all. I pray that this word has done something for you. I pray it empowered you. And that is my prayer. Don't forget, bless us, amen, according to how God has blessed you through this broadcast, uh, through all of the things that we, we've already showed on the screen. My prayer is, is that you just do the works of God. I want to see God's people move 
throughout the earth doing what God has called them to do. Be a great example. Amen. Don't be sloppy with your work. Amen. Because Jesus died. Amen. God gave up his precious son so that we would do the works. Amen. Of him who has sent us. Amen. How can they believe except they be preached to? And God has saved you and he's delivered you. And this is what this series is talking about. This series is talking about the authority. You possess authority. Don't put it up under a bushel. Amen. Use that. Make full proof of your ministry. Do the works of an evangelist. God is calling us. It's time now to get off the seat of do nothing and do something. Amen. So that God can be glorified in the earth. There is a people. There is a remnant. And God says you are part of it. And I pray that you will do that which God has already ordained. Amen. And that you will walk in that power and that authority. And I pray that the next time we meet, amen, don't forget we come on Facebook at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning. We also have physical church. You can come to our location at 501 Tarboro Street in Rocky Mount, North Carolina. And let's have a great fellowship. Let's empower one another. Let's become each other's cheerleader that we have do the work that God has called us to do. Until we meet again, I pray that God will bless you and keep you. That is my fervent prayer for your life. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. That is my prayer.